Welcome to the Porn Reboot Podcast, where you get practical tips to gaining control over your porn or sex addiction. We help ambitious men end their out-of-control sexual behavior with pornography, sex, and masturbation so that you can maximize your life, perform at your potential, and remain in control in the driver's seat, which is where you have to be in order to gain or maintain the success you want in life. I'm your host, J.K. Amazi, Certified Sex and Porn Addiction Recovery Coach. Welcome to the episode. We're going to talk about vulnerability versus revealing your weaknesses. Because I'm starting to realize, as a result of coaching our new program, the Dating Reboot program, I'm beginning to realize that some brothers do not know the difference. Not the difference, but one key difference. And when you have struggled with a out of control sexual behavior for a very long time, when you have some traits of a person who deals with learned helplessness, you throw your hands up and you've been trained to like seek help and support from, from somebody else, your mom, from dad, and then you start doing it with your wife and so on, you might confuse vulnerability for seeking validation or seeking someone to feel sorry for you for your weakness. A typical example would be, let's say if you're dating somebody, you're with this woman and you like her and you're a single guy and you're like, you know what, I wanna, I wanna be with this person in a long-term relationship. And being vulnerable would be sharing that, you know, it was really, really hard for me to talk to you initially because I was actually afraid that you would reject me but I did it anyway. That's vulnerability. Vulnerability in this case is you are sharing that, that, hey, I was afraid of talking to you in the first place or approaching you because I was scared of being rejected. But it's also a risk. Vulnerability inherently carries risk. She knows when you're sharing it to her that, okay, like that's a risky thing to share because there is the chance that I could judge him for maybe being scared to approach women, something like that. But revealing a weakness, on the other hand, would be you telling the same woman, you know, I'm always deathly afraid to talk to women. I'll be honest with you, you are the first woman ever that I approached. Like, I've never approached any woman. I've never been overcome my fear of rejection. You're the first one. How is this different? This is different because instead of just talking about one emotion that may have happened in the moment, one scenario, you went back into your history to pull up something that was perhaps a longstanding problem. And while she may appreciate you for being vulnerable, You have to understand that when you share a weakness, there is a very real risk that that person will wonder if there is something wrong with you. It is unlikely that a woman is going to wonder if there's something wrong with you. If you're sitting with her, you told her like just for her, just approaching her, there was this worry that you'd be rejected. It doesn't show a pattern of behavior. But when you share that this has happened to you and you're like this with women all the time, she starts thinking, okay, where does this, where does this come from? Is something wrong with him? Does he have an anxiety problem? And that extends to you telling the woman, you know what? I actually have a longstanding problem with anxiety. I have a longstanding problem with this. I have a longstanding problem with that. That is revealing a weakness. Now I do want to make it clear that that differs from disclosing to somebody that you are actually dating or you're married to the fact that you're struggling with an out-of-control behavior. This particular episode is not about disclosure, but when you tell somebody that you have an issue with pornography addiction, brother, you better be damn sure that you are in a program fixing it. There are all these guys out there that are not doing anything, like you're not working with a coach, You're not in a 12-step group. You're not speaking to a therapist. You're just listening to podcasts and reading books and filling out worksheets. 
and you tell somebody, your partner, like, hey, you know, just so you know, I have a, or, or a woman you're interested in, I'm using that as the example, but it can extend to business, any aspect of your life, that I have this problem with pornography. I've had it for many years. I've struggled with it for years, and I've tried to quit, and I can't. I find it's, it's just, it's been a really tough thing. No, no, no. That, brother, that is revealing a weakness. I want you guys to be very clear about the subtleties here. Telling somebody, I have a problem with pornography addiction, and I am currently working on it, and I am going to end that behavior. It is inevitable, I talked about this in a previous episode, that I will end this behavior is completely different from going back into the history of this. And for those of you, although this is not addressed to you, those of you who have a partner that's struggling with betrayal trauma as a result of this, you guys understand firsthand the danger of revealing a weakness. What is that? Your partner will keep going back into the past because now she believes that something is wrong with you. She's going to keep going back into the past because what she's going to hear is, man, this guy had this problem before I was around. Now I'm already hitched to him. I'm engaged to this man mentally. I'm engaged and married to him emotionally and otherwise. My future is intertwined with his. So now I'm concerned about his weakness. This is also another reason why your partner should not be your accountability partner. She's too close to the problem, and you keep revealing your weakness. It is human nature. I don't, we're not talking about people's morals or values or standards here, gentlemen. We're talking about yours. But the truth is, you cannot control the morals, the values, or standards of your partner, of mom and dad, of anybody around you. You can only control yours. And it is human nature to take advantage of people's weaknesses. Some people will do it. Your wife may never have the intention of doing it. But if she's very hurt, if her past trauma, which has nothing to do with you, comes up, if she's very emotional, in that altered state, she could very well take advantage of your weakness. And when she says something, it cannot be taken back. I would like you to extend this to business, to all sorts of other relationships. Ask yourself, am I being vulnerable about something that has happened to me? Or here's the question to ask, am I sharing a weakness in the secret hope that that person will pat me on the back or make me feel better about it? Again, some of us do this without even thinking. As a matter of fact, as I'm sharing this, I just thought of a situation that came up. This was within Elevated Recovery, and we had brought on somebody to help us with our ads. Now, almost everything we do is organic. A lot of it is through word of mouth. Even my one-on-one -on -one clients are referred by friends, members in their churches, other high performers. So we do a lot of just, I just come out and I speak and we do a great job and the word spreads around. And that's how we've grown to where we are today. Several times in the past, we have dabbled in ads here and there. And it's been a challenge, I'll say this. But I recently brought somebody on within our company to help us with ads so we can spread the message. And I caught myself doing this where I thought I was being vulnerable to him. But the truth is, I was actually just seeking for this experienced ad guy to be like, it's okay. And, and it was just about how much uh, large platforms just don't like people talking about porn addiction. Like Facebook, Instagram, in the past, they had cons, till today, they constantly ban us because they assume that what we are doing is propagating pornography, even though it's the opposite. Even if we use different words, we also have a lot of people who report our ads because they think that we have some other agenda. They're like, oh, you're trying to convert people to Christianity. You're not a woke person. You're anti-pornography, all that kind of bullshit. 
So over the years, it's been an uphill battle in that area. But I remember sharing this with him in a way that something clicked in me. And I was like, something feels weird about this. And I was like, oh, I'm bitching about people reporting our ads and the ad platforms or even people within the ad platforms. We've had people who, and we found this out within something, I don't want to say, well, fuck it, like Facebook or Instagram. There'll be a very specific, it could be a customer service person, a tech person who just doesn't like the fact that we're going up against pornography. And we found this out firsthand and they just shut it down and it, nobody knows what happened. And that's that about that. So I just remember just complaining to him about that. And I was like, ah, it's one thing to say, you know what, the work we do, it's sometimes challenging. And I've become a little bit jaded towards paid advertisements because of the things that have happened to us in the past. Now that's being vulnerable and just letting him know like, hey, before we bring you in and put you on payroll and all these things, I want you to understand how I feel about this. And you can ask any questions you have about that. Instead, I started talking about something that revealed a weakness. And the weakness is that like I get emotional or angry about the fact that we constantly get or that I was, I would say like, we've come a long way over the past few years with, with the organic. We've been very blessed and we've grown a lot. But I, I think it would be fair to admit that some of that emotion is still there. That was revealing a weakness because I was seeking for him to tell me, it's okay, don't worry, with me coming in, that shit's never gonna happen to you in the future. So that's an example of something happening in business. But as far as I'm concerned, it revealed a weakness about me. And it probably revealed a lot more. It depends on the person who hears it. They can hear different things. They can hear that, oh, okay, I know the type of stuff that pisses this dude off. I know what I can dig at. Does that make sense, gentlemen? So again, it is important to understand the difference between vulnerability and expressing or rather exposing a weakness. The rule of thumb is that it is fine in certain situations to be vulnerable. It is a masculine trait. But in general, we want to hide our weaknesses, especially from people that we haven't built very close relationships with or with people who may have a vested interest in hurting us. So again, there are some people that you can share your weaknesses with. We do that within our group. It's a safe space for that. Like within a group like Porn Reboots, nobody in the group has a vested interest in hurting you. I don't. None of your accountability partners do. Like what the heck are they going to do? They have no vested interest in it. Your wife? Oh, yes. She does. Because she can hurt you in a way your accountability partner cannot. Your accountability partner, let's say in some weird, hypothetical, crazy situation, decides to come after you, legally you can go back after him. Like legally I can go after your accountability partner for being a fucking douchebag and trying to break our non-disclosure agreement or anything like that, the rules within the program. But if your wife decides to come at you because of a weakness, there is nothing that you can do about it. Remember, whether you wanna believe it or not, and, and this goes for guys who are in romantic partnerships, your partner's love for you is conditional. Your love for your children, for instance, is unconditional. If you believe in God, God's love for you is unconditional. But your relationship with your partner, do not fool yourself, is conditional. It is based on certain things and certain roles you must fulfill. If not, she would not be with you. So brothers, I hope that cleared up this issue, especially for those of you who are within the program and who, uh, who sometimes wonder, hey, where do I draw the line with vulnerability? I'm JK, your brother in this struggle. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Porn Reboot Podcast. I'll speak to you later on in the week. 
If you found this episode helpful, here are four ways I can help you with your out of control sexual behavior for free. The first way is to grab a free copy of my book, Confessions of a Porn Addict, Seven Secrets of Porn Free Men at elevatedrecovery.org or visit the link in the description below this episode. The second way is if you're not sure where to start, but you'd like to learn more about my team and I, if you'd like to spend time with like-minded professionals and business owners who are controlling their behavior, then join our free and confidential group, The Porn Reboot Group on Facebook. There's a link to join in the description below this episode. The third way is if you need help right now because you have a burning issue, your behavior with pornography is hurting you mentally or emotionally, you're about to lose your relationship, you want to live up to your potential, be an authentic man, and free yourself from shame, guilt, and underachieving, then click on the link in the description below this episode that says free coaching call. And the fourth way is to leave us a five-star review if you enjoy this podcast so that we can reach more men who are struggling in silence and bring back the lessons we learn from coaching them to freedom.